Well, hey there, guys, and welcome back. On this week's show, a fun little shop sign. Well, a friend of mine sent me this picture the other day of this funny little shop sign, and I thought that it would be a great idea to bring to you guys. Um, it is mostly done on the scroll saw with some table saw work, and it all starts out with a printout from your computer. Well, we've all heard the saying, measure twice, cut once. Um, and that is what this project is going to revolve around. I've used a stencil font, which is going to be perfect for the scroll saw because now each individual section can be cut out and have it like a stencil. And that's the look that I want for this project. So what I'm going to do is I have a piece of 1 8 inch hardboard here. It measures 6 inches by 7 inches. I'm going to spray our pattern with some spray adhesive on the back of it. Let it tack up for 3 minutes and then we're going to adhere it to our 1 8 inch hardboard. There we go. So now that we have this pattern rubbed down onto our hardboard, we're going to take it over to the drill press and I'm going to drill a 1 16th diameter blade entry hole in each one of these cutouts and then we're going to head over to the scroll saw. And with the number 2 reverse tooth blade, we're just going to cut out this entire saying on our hardboard. So I'm going to carry on and finish this cutting off and I'll come back and I'll see you when I'm finished. And at this point you should have something that looks like this. Now I just want to point out if you don't have lines on your face here after cutting this then you're doing it wrong. I've said it many times on this show and I cannot say it enough that hardboard and MDF is nasty stuff to cut on any equipment in the shop and uh, that dust is horrible stuff. So get a dust mask on and get these marks on your face so that you can keep the stuff out of your lungs. So now let's head over to the bench and we're going to get this pattern off of the hardboard. Well, the absolute best way that I've ever used to get a pattern off after scrolling is using a heat gun. Uh, so you just want to use a low heat and heat it up to soften the glue and then it should just peel right off. At this point, this might be, okay, maybe not might be, it will be a little tacky. That is from the spray adhesive. And a little bit of mineral spirits on a piece of paper towel or a rag will clean this up nicely. So I'm going to clean this up and we're going to give it a good sanding. Well, the next thing that you're going to want now that this is sanded up is another piece of hardboard. This one is a quarter inch thick. This one was one eighth. It is going to be cut the exact same size as our first piece. So six inches by seven inches. So for now, we can put our cutting aside and we're going to concentrate on this piece. But before we can do this, we need some scrap wood out of the wood rack. Now I have these scrap pieces of pine that were up in the rack. 
I've cut them so that they are one inch wide. It's three quarter inch pine. And on one edge of each of these pieces, I'm going to put a rabbit or cut a rabbit. That rabbit is going to be three eighths of an inch deep and a quarter inch wide. Well, that rabbit that we've now cut will eventually accept both our quarter inch backer board and our one eighth inch cutting that we made. So I've shown you guys how to do this uh, quite a few times. I don't think we need another video on it about how to make a frame. Um, I'll post a link below to my frame tutorial, but for now, what we want to do is take our backboard piece and we're going to very carefully cut out, <laughs> measuring twice and cutting once, we're gonna cut out a frame that will fit our hardboard exactly. And now using our shop made frame clamp that we did a while back on the show, we're just going to dry fit this together to make sure that the frame fits uh, around our original piece. And sure enough, it fits quite well. I think it's kind of funny that in the test fit, though, this is actually backwards. I don't know why I find that funny, but I do. Okay, so we know that the frame fits perfectly around our cutting and our backboard. So what now? Well, now we need to take one piece of our long section of on our seven inch side, and we need one piece from our short section on our on our short side. And in the one corner, just like this, this would be how the pieces go, we wanna take it over to the saw and we're gonna cut one inch. Actually, you know what, no, let's see, that looks pretty good right there. Let's see how much that is. That's about three quarters. So we're gonna cut about a three quarter inch length off of each of these pieces. Now before we carry on too much further, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this outside. The top piece that has our cutting in it, I am going to spray paint this flat white. And this backer board, I am going to spray paint the one surface flat black. And that will give us some fantastic contrast and really make those letters stand out in our cutting. While we're waiting for the paint to dry, it's now time to glue up our frame. And you can see here that obviously we are missing a substantial chunk out of it. And that's okay. That's the whole point of this project. That's what makes it funny. So we're going to put glue in each of the corners. We're going to clamp them up using some 45 degree clamps. And then we're just going to let it sit and dry. After that, there's not much that we can do until tomorrow when both the paint and the frame is dried up. Well, due to the small nature of this frame, there isn't enough room to fit four corner clamps on here. So I've clamped up these two sections and once they're dried up, I'll have to clamp this one together and this one as well, just to hold it all in place and make sure everything stays square. It'll be a two-stage glue up, that's all. No big deal. And much like quite a few of the projects here on the show, with the paint drying and the frame drying, there's really nothing to do but wait. And that's what I'm going to do. So when all this is dry, I'm going to come back and I'll see you. 
And now that our frame is dried up, I'm going to give it a good sanding all over. I'm going to do a 1 8 inch round over off around the perimeter on the front and the back and soften up all the edges and just clean it up. Well now it's time to assemble our little project and the first thing that we're going to do is place a little bead of glue just in our rabbit here. You don't want a lot because you want to try to avoid squeeze out if we can. So just a little tiny bead of glue all the way around here. And once we get that in place, we will place our scrolling into the frame. But you'll want to make sure that your alignment is right. We don't want a situation like we had earlier in the video where uh, things were backwards. So just make sure that the white side is facing out. And we'll just place that in our frame. Now the reason we're gluing this up is because our frame is miss missing a section, gluing this in here will help to solidify everything and pull it together really nicely. So now it's time to glue our backer board in and we're just going to add a little bit of glue in these waste areas here or our blank areas, I guess. It's not really waste. Just like this, just a little bit. And once we get that in place, we will place our backboard in there and glue that in place as well and then clamp it up and let it dry. And we'll just get a couple clamps on that. Well, we did get a little bit of squeeze out and that's not a problem. Some water in a cotton swab took care of that quite easily. I guess the only thing really left to do with this now, once it dries, is add a sawtooth hanger and display it in your shop. And there you have it. A fun little scrolled shop sign. What a fun project. How many times have you heard, every time you cut something short, someone says, measure twice, cut once. Yeah, I get it. I've been doing this a long time and to this day I still cut things too short. Like my dad used to say, I cut it twice and it's still too short. <laughs> Guys, this is a fun little project, a great skill builder for the scroll saw cutting out those stenciled letters. Um, <clears throat> the hardest thing to cut on a scroll saw for a, for a product that is designed to cut curves and that sort of thing. The hardest thing to cut is a circle and this stencil uh, design, I guess we'll call it, really lends itself to great practice going around the curves of things like the C and the O and that sort of thing. It's a great skill builder on the scroll saw. A lot of fun too and a great way to build your patience. There's a lot of interior cuts to cut this thing out. And that is a test to your patience right there as it is. Um, drilling the hole, putting your blade through, tensioning, cutting, releasing the tension, releasing the blade, etc., etc. It goes on and on. But honestly, what a nice, relaxing way to spend some time to cut it out. Guys, what a load of fun. And yeah, honestly, what is wrong with coming into the shop and looking at that sign and giving yourself a good chuckle? If you guys remember back a while ago, I did that decision spinner where it was always rigged to say woodworking. And honestly, I still flick that thing every time I come into the shop just for the fun of it because it makes me smile. And in this day and age, you know what? That's all we really need is just to smile a little more. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you've enjoyed this project. It's just a little bit of fun. 
If you haven't already, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Click the bell so that you don't miss the notifications of future episodes of the show. I hope you're going to give this one a whirl yourself and boost your scroll saw skills. I hope you're going to hang it up in your shop and give someone that extra chuckle when they come in through the door. And I also hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video. For the record, if any of you are interested in the exact pattern that I have here, I have it in a PDF format. Send me a message on the channel's Facebook page. I would be more than happy to send it your way. Um, I printed it out at 65% of the original size to get the size that you saw me build here today. Thanks for tuning in, guys, and uh, let me know if you want that pattern.